game in the South. The third seed out of the Southeastern is Kermit Davis. In his first year at Ole Miss, named SEC Coach of the Year. They will meet on the Big 12, the Oklahoma Sooners, the number nine seed, six NCAA tournament appearances in the last seven seasons. Probably on the friendly side of the bubble, so not a surprise, but one of those power conference teams that was under 500 in this league, we'll see when we find out the second first four pairing, how they did it up between the power conferences in the mid All right, these are first and second round games in San Jose on Friday night and Sunday. The fourth team out of the Big Ten, the Badgers of Wisconsin. Ethan Happ, 16th player in Big Ten history, a three-time first-team All-Big Ten selection, helps lead the way for the Badgers. They will meet the Oregon Ducks, the number 12 seed, first team in our brackets here today, out of the Pac-12. Oregon returns in four games, four days after the Pac-12 tournament champion. Very impressive in that championship win over Washington. All right. Moving on down, the second team out of the Big 12, Kansas State, the Wildcats, who want to share the Big 12 regular season title, 25 and 8 on the season, and 14 and 4 in the Big 12. Not sure if Dean Wade's going to be able to go. You see him right there, bottom right, with that boot on his foot. The interest in the CPS chance. Part of the tournament last year as well. They will play the number 13 seed out of the Big West. You see Irvine's Ant Eaters. They won the Big West regular season title and tournament title and what the hell like them a lot. I really do. I like the way this team defends and rebounds and plays an aggressive style, but they're efficient at the offensive end. The Ant Eaters are positioned to do some damage. All right, we move on down to South Region Bracket. These are first and second round games to be played in Hartford on Thursday and Saturday. First team out of the Big East on our board, the number six seed, Villanova Wildcats. Coach Jay Wright in his 16th NCAA tournament, three straight Big East tournament titles. They edged out Seton Hall from the Big East regular season title as well. So the Villanova Wildcats all set to make an appearance in Hartford beginning on Thursday. They will go up against the 11th seed, St. Mary's Gale, out of the West Coast Conference, who upset the nation's number one team, Gonzaga, to win the West Coast Conference Tournament Championship. And the Gale is the double factor of pitch right here. So if you're looking for bubble teams, they usually go to the 11 and the 12 seed. We've got two conference champions there in St. Mary's and Oregon, so it looks like, look like this is a uh, bubble mystery reveal in this region. Mm -hmm. All right, the number three seed. And the fifth team out of the Big Ten, the Purdue Boilermakers, who want to share in the Big Ten regular season title. They come into the NCAA tournament having won 14 of their last 17 games. Outstanding job this season by Matt Painter and his staff. They will take on the number 14 seed Monarchs of Old Dominion out of Conference USA. Conference USA regular season and tournament champion. Now, to first and second round games in Columbus, Ohio on Friday and on Sunday. Our third team out of the American Athletic Conference, the Bearcats of Cincinnati. They've won the American Athletic Conference tournament title, beating top seed Houston. I can't believe Cincinnati is a seven seed. That is very low, especially considering their win today. All right, they will take on the Iowa Hawkeyes, another team out of the Big Ten. The Hawkeyes 22 and 11 on the year, 10 and 10 in a very tough Big Ten conference. Going back to that Cincinnati comment, I don't think they'll mind heading to Columbus, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll make them feel welcome, I'm sure. Now, the number two seed in the South, the Tennessee Volunteers out of the SEC, our fourth team out of the SEC, Coach Rick Barnes, the job this year. He fell a little bit short in the SEC title. Okay. Yeah, let's go to once in candidates for not feeling as bad as the Indians at Kentucky twice, but they're not there. And that certainly clarifies the number one seed pitcher with those following close. And who are they going to face? The 15th seed in the South out of the Patriot League, the Raiders of Colgate won the Patriot League tournament title. Oh, look at that excitement. 11 straight wins for the Raiders. They've got a magnetic point guard in Jordan Burns and also Rappelis. I've announced this a big time personal wing player for them. This is a team that's got great momentum going into the tournament. All right, so we go back to the top and we do our review. Villanova, you have to come to the 
the tournament was looking for purpose. Tell you what, what a job Jay Wright did. When you talk about what they lost from a year ago, the leadership of Pasco and Booth, really a huge part of the development of their young players to win both regular season and conference championships. Again, remarkable work, outstanding effort by the Wild. Historically, you look for the 12 seeds and the 13s to pull first round upsets, and I think that's what happens uh, here. I think Oregon beat Wisconsin, and you see her mind. You talked about Dean Wade uh, being hurt for Kansas yeah. State, so they're uh, a little bit uh, in a weak spot there. So I like those two. Well, 12s are 16 and 24 in the last 10 years in this tournament. All right, let's slide on to the second half of the South Region bracket. We talked about Villanova and Purdue will something to prove. Yeah, definitely. This old Dominion team just won a number of close games. They got a dynamic duo in um, Ahmad Carcaver and also BJ Stiff. But I like what um, Purdue is capable of doing. Good size up front of Carson Edwards. I have a couple of geographic quirks. If it's Villanova and Purdue, Purdue is a higher seeded team, but the game is in Hartford. A little bit of a, a home court advantage. You talk about Cincinnati and Columbus. If they get Tennessee in the second round, Cincinnati is already hard enough to beat without all those uh, Bearcat fans put in your hometown. So that's an interesting wrinkle in the geography. All right, guys, we have several teams still on edge, getting their fate, including the Mountain West champion, Utah State, along with Walker and Gonzaga, Murray State, as well as the Mid American Conference champs, Buffalo and Marquette. It is almost that. It's time for brackets. Play with friends and compete for a trip to next year's Final Four. Download the CBS Sports app and start playing now. A few teams happy to be in the big dance. Coming up, the reveal of Midwest Region the selection show continues live here on CBS. Thank you. 
Utah State has size. They've got scoring. I think that would be a really intriguing match. I think a very dangerous team here is New Mexico State. I love teams that have won all year. The 35, 15 to 1 Christians as clubs. I think they actually will beat Kansas in the second round and make it the Sweet 16. So we're not going to have that fun. No, 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 yeah, and uh, Kentucky could play Seton Hall in the second round, but I actually like Wofford uh, to beat uh, Seton Hall in that game, and that'd be a great matchup for Wofford and Kentucky. Kentucky's playing great basketball. I think it's going to be a Kentucky North Carolina rematch in the league. We be? are running out of regions. A couple of teams still waiting to find out where they're going, including Prairie View AM. <laughs> Thank you. 
the conductor of this train come up and say a few words, Dr. Uh, Ruth, I'm sorry. Ruth, if you don't mind, would you come and bless us, please? Thank you. 